All right, I'm going to be demonstrating the MK168 transistor checker. It checks a number of components. I'm going to show you how different components will work on one of these, and we will be covering LEDs, diodes, MOSFETs, capacitors, inductors, bipolar transistors, and Darlington transistors. Part of the uh, lecture here too is to help you note differences and how parts check out. Let's zoom in on the MK168. This is available on eBay. That's where I bought mine from a number of vendors. Uses a 9 volt battery. All it has is a single test switch. It'll test your component then it'll go off. Let's note the, ye the yellow, green, and red are numbered 1, 2, 3. The, the tester comes with this little bitty board that plugs into those three banana jacks. I'm going to zoom in just a bit more for you. Notice the numbers down here. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. When you, you want to use the components in series, you want to use one, two, and three. You don't want to try to stick a component on three twice and then two or whatever. You want to use one, two, or three. The tester also comes with a set of these leads that you can plug into the banana jacks for testing larger items that don't fit this zero insertion force socket. The first item we're going to demonstrate in checking them, checking them are LEDs. I have an entire box full of them. Red, green, yellow, blue, and white. To check an LED in this, just, just select an LED, insert in the zero insertion in the socket, put that down, hit the button, you should see the LED blink. Okay, let's look at what we got here. This identifies the anode and the cathode. It has a little, diodes usually have a little bit of leakage current in the reverse mode. In this case it's four nanoamps, that's fine. Okay, they call this UF, but that's volt that's forward operating voltage. So this diode has a voltage drop of one point, and if you wait too long it'll go off on you, so hit test again. Has a forward voltage of 1.94 volts and a capacitance when reverse biased of 4 picofarads. Let's test another LED. You note that that one has 1.94. What's the forward voltage drop on a blue LED? Alright, again it identified my anode and cathode, the cathode being on 3 on this side, and that's the flat side, that is correct but your operating voltage is 2.8 volts. Let's try a different LED. Let's go over to a green. And you can see the green blinking. 1.99 volts, a reverse of 10 uh, picofarads, 4 nanoamps, and identified cathode and anode. And so you notice that different LEDs have different forward operating voltages. Now we're going to come to something interesting. This is a dual LED with a common cathode. It will check those. Okay, 
it tells you the voltage on the two diodes. One of them is 1.96, one is 1.88. But you notice 1, 2, and 3. 2, you notice the two cathodes on the diodes. If you can see them go together, that's a common cathode dual diode. This is another type of dual diode, but it's a common anode. It will check those as well. There you go. This shows that pin 2, in this case, has both the anodes. And you notice the differences in voltages on the LEDs. Alright, let's check one more LED. If you heard some background noise earlier, we have an absolute deluge here in Bristol. Uh, here we are in the middle of April, it's still not warmed up, and every time we get a warm front it dumps rain. Let's see what the voltage on the uh, red LED is. 1.94 volts. So, and, and a capacitance of 4 picofarads. So that's how you test LEDs. All right, the next item we're going to be testing is capacitors, both polarized and non-polarized. This is a 1,000 microfarad capacitor. It doesn't do the voltage ratings, but it does measure your capacitance. Again, drop in. It's 799 microfarads, so it's down, it's a bit low. Where this capacitor came from was off of a motherboard out of a computer. You'll find out where it's been real hot on those motherboards, they'll lose a lot of their value. And this is and that's probably why a lot of these computer motherboards die as bad capacitors. Let's check another one. This is one that I bought bought new. Let's see how it does. All right, 911 microfarads. It's rated at 1,000. That's within specs. It tells you that it's connected to 1 and 3. But notice... loss okay that's losses through the uh, electrolyte through the plates and whatever but this is something you need to note an ESR equals 0 0.4 ohms ESR is equivalent series resistance what that is is inductant it's reactance at high frequencies and if you're dealing with switching power supplies for example you want a low ESR. High ESRs cause problems like noise and so forth. So low ESR is good. You'll find out with electrolytics, unless they are tandems or specially made capacitors, the smaller ones have a higher degree of ESR, as I will demonstrate. Here's a small electrolytic capacitor. Clamp it in. Press test. Okay, it's a one microfarad. When it says 1037 NF, that's 1 1.037 microfarads. But now, look at the ESR on this baby. 2.9 ohms and a fairly small value capacitor. Um wouldn't want to use it in a switching power supply if I didn't have to but depending on the application it would work fine let's test another capacitor this time these are going to be those little bitty circuit board little bitty bypass capacitors 
that you see on circuit boards, the real small ones. Okay, this is a this is actually a 0 0.01 microfarad. Has low, fairly low loss. Not much to say about it, but you, it has no measurable ESR. Let's try another one. This one's a 47 picofarad. I already know the value on it. Drop in, hit test. Bingo, right on right on target. 47 picofarads. Now, what's interesting is this non-polarized 4 microfarad capacitor. And notice what it does. Okay, 3971 NF, that means it's around 4 microfarads, but look at your ESR, 0 0.05 ohm. So this is a very low ESR capacitor, and this is largely due to the size of the plates, the gauge of the wire, the, uh, and, it's not, and it's not an electrolytic, it's a, it's a real capacitor. All right.